feel bad? I mean, it was just a matter of time before she saw through you anyway. Right on this street in the wee hours of Saturday morning, November 9th. That right, Gabriel. <laughs> A talented star from the age of three years old, a face you cannot forget. He had a great career throughout his young adult life and a promising one, but his life will be taken away due to false allegations. This is the story of Merlin Santana. Well, stay woke, baby creeping. Whoa, whoa, whoa. stay woke. Hi guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. I hope you're having a great day. We are at 3K subscribers, 3,000 subscribers. Like, y'all, I really appreciate all the love and support. This just motivates me to keep on going because some days I have those days where I'm like, dang, is, is the message getting out there? Are people watching? But you guys really are. In this short span of time, like, me being on youtube i just really appreciate all the kind words all the support all the love like thank y'all so much we just only gonna go up from here also guys if you want to bring awareness for black and brown victims please share and subscribe leave a thumbs up and comment below so you never miss a video definitely go ahead and like i at least want to get this video to realistically let's get this to 1k likes please and um go ahead and share because when you guys do that it really helps with the algorithm it really gets these cases out there and this platform out there so don't forget to like and comment below and um yeah so let's jump into today's case so we're going to be talking about merlin santana now he was my childhood crush you know i got a husband and all but we all we all have a childhood crush and um he was it for me and i always thought that he was related to joelle's santana for some reason i'm sure others thought that too maybe if it was maybe it was just me because i was growing up in new york at the time in the early 2000s so you know we listened to Dipset and you know we all had a crush on Joel Santana as well so I just thought they were both probably like good looking brothers but come to find out they're not even <laughs> related at all but we all know um Merlin Santana for various shows such as um Sister Sister could you excuse us please <laughs> I can't wait till that triplet gets home oh it's three of them <laughs> And on um, the Steve Harvey show. Merlin Santana was born in New York City on March 14, 1976. His parents were both immigrants from the Dominican Republic and a shout out to all my Afro Latinas out there that are watching. So um, they came to the United States to have a better life. Now his parents um, actually called Merlin their miracle baby because he was actually born premature and doctors believe that he was going to have just physical and mental, mental health issues. But Merlin was such a strong baby and beat all the odds. He grew up to be a perfect little brown cutie. Growing up, Merlin didn't raise up in the best neighborhood. He was living in the Washington Heights area, which was filled with a whole bunch of illegal activities. You know, it was the streets. So his mother was like, no, I don't want my son influence. I gotta put him in a better environment and what she did so she put him in a lot of after school activities a lot of artsy things like um, modeling acting singing dancing because she knew that if she can get marlon away from that environment she would be able to push her son in the right direction and that's what she did so marlon started off doing a lot of modeling and um, that led into acting after his mom had a chance to encounter a talent agent. So he landed some gigs and some commercials and he was sought out a lot by talent agencies because he was also bilingual. So that gave him an advantage. He was able to speak um, Spanish very fluently and English. So his talent would pay off doing those small commercials because he landed his big break playing Stanley Rudy Huxtable's boyfriend on The Cosby Show in 1991. Don't feel bad. I mean, it was just a matter of time before she saw through you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is the last time, Stanley. Now, Bill Cosby actually noticed Merlin after seeing him in a play in 1990. He did such a great job that, you know, Bill Cosby was like, look, I'm going to need him on my show. He was also seen in a sitcom called Getting By, which did pretty good. And then he um, made his appearance, which is actually one of my favorite episodes on Sister Sister, playing a love entrance that Tia and Tamara was so into. Now, as he began to get older and become now a young adult in his early 20s, he started to position himself to play more serious roles like sitcoms called Under One Roof and then he transitioned to cast in the show Moesha. Now um, he really wanted to play realistic roles that cater to his age and in Moesha that was one of his standout roles in 1996. He played Moesha's boyfriend and his character was into like poetry and very smooth and I can tell for sure around that time girls were just gushing over him. Happy birthday Moesha. It was until you showed up who invited you? He had the look, he had the role, it was just, it was selling for everybody. And y'all, I'm gonna add this in. Can we please bring back shows like Moesha? Shows that were just so timeless and so relatable because now that I'm in my 20s, I can relate to every episode. And there's not much shows that kind of cater to the black community without it being like whitewashed or portraying us as ghetto or thugs or just senseless dramas so well, can we please bring back characters you know like moesha and shows like moesha shows like the parkers like i'm gonna need that i'm gonna really need that back but back to the case so um merlin made his stamp on moesha and later landed one of his biggest and known roles i would have to say on the Steve Harvey show called Romeo Santana. He was on that show for six years acting alongside Steve Harvey and being um, nominated for a NAACP Image Award and also a Alma Award. Now Merlin actually really enjoyed playing this specific character because he wanted to make a statement. He wanted this particular character to have his last name, Romeo Santana, because he wanted to bring awareness for the Afro-Latina community, showcasing that there are so many different colors and shades within the Latin community. He wanted to showcase a Black and Dominican character like him that he can really um, relate to. So soon after the Steve Harvey show ended in the same year, 2002, Merlin had a tough time getting new roles. You know, things were changing, shows were changing, times were changing. So he was very, you know, depressed about his stagnant acting career as he attempted to readjust back into regular society, not really being in the mainstream anymore. And me personally, I really felt like he should have, you know, dabbled with the modeling a little bit more. But, you know, he continued to try to find new avenues to create and, you know, express himself. So he channeled his inner energy into recording a rap album which unfortunately really didn't take off so merlin was still on the hustle to get back into acting taking a few acting gigs here and there but nothing really stuck with him so in this phase of his life mainly you know merlin really wanted to get back into acting but that was something he had to wait on he really had to you know press on in and not really give up but he had a lot of time on his hand. But all of this free time will put him in a horrible situation that was totally unfair. On one particular night, Merlin and his good friend, another childhood star, Brandon Adams, went to a Chinese restaurant when they met up with a girl and her friend. Now, one of the girls that was pushing up on Merlin told him that her name was Mercedes, which is really Monique King. So at dinner, Monique and Merlin, you know, they're chatting it up. They're getting to know each other. You know, they're filling each other out. And I'm sure this girl is gushing over Merlin because you want to date with Merlin Santana, everybody's childhood crush. Matter of fact, the crush at the time. So, you know, this is probably a really big deal for her. <laughs> Why was Merlin even giving her any type of play? And I'm not here to judge. But I know we're thinking the same thing once we saw that picture. 
but we're just gonna continue. Now all four of them are having dinner and they decided, hey, let's get up and go to the club. You know, the night is still young, let's turn up. So they at the club, they having a good time and Merlin and Monique decided to leave the club together. Later on that night, they had a one night stand. So the next day when Monique was hanging with Merlin, he didn't really show her the same attention he did the day before. He wasn't really giving her any extra play. Like he wasn't leading her leading her on to think that he wanted something more. Like it, it was what it was. This was a one night stand and that's that. And this actually fueled something very sinister inside of Monique. So the next day Monique, she ends up leaving Merlin and hanging out with her own friends. Damien Gates and Brandon Bynes along with the girl she was with the night she met Merlin on the date. So because she was so mad at the fact Merlin was giving her the cold shoulder and couldn't just take it for what it was, she decides to come up with a false allegation against Merlin. She told Damien and Brandon that Merlin had did a vicious vicious act and stated that he rp'd her now i can't say the word on this platform because youtube will demonetize me so she was leaning towards that merlin was wrestling with her without her consent and she told this lie in a way that it got her friends fired up because all they know is that merlin is this horrible person he did this horrible act to monique monique didn't want it but Merlin was persistent and, you know, just totally violated her. That's what she came up with. So on November 9th, 2002, Damien and Brandon were all fired up. They were upset. They were angry. So they're like, you know what? We're going to put a hit on this man. We're going to find out where Merlin is and we're going to take him out. So they went back to their house to get a shotgun with a laser on it and a handgun. So after getting, you know, everything they needed, they found out where Merlin was going to be at. Now, Merlin, poor Merlin, he's out with um, Brandon Adams at a house party in the Crenshaw, L.A. area. So um, Brandon and Damien, they decided that, look, we're going to park our car far enough that he can't see us and wait outside for him to make, you know, their move. So Merlin and Brandon Adams leave the party and they sit in Brandon's car for a second. So while they're sitting there in the car, they noticed a red laser in the rear view mirror and they both look back to see what it was. And that's when Brandon and Damien opened fire on Merlin Santana and Brandon Adams, mostly at Merlin multiple times. So shots are being fired and Brandon Adams, he's panicking, he's scared, but he was able to drive off once he saw a safe spot. And he leans to the side and he noticed that Merlin was slumped over in the passenger seat. Brandon immediately called 911 in which Merlin was taken to the hospital, but later died. And the disturbing part of this whole thing was that Monique set this whole thing up. It was documented that Monique had a history of talking her way into things and being very, very manipulative. She had a troubled childhood, but for me, that doesn't give you the right to lie about something so disgusting and foul because a person doesn't want to give you any type of play. Like, you should have already knew what type, what type of time it was. Like, it was a one night stand. You are, you know, mature enough to understand what you're doing. You understand the act that you're doing. So just take it as a G and move on. But she didn't want to do that. She was filled with anger and hate that she wanted to get rid of Merlin. And she knew who to talk to and she knew how to do it. And the worst thing as well, she also lied to Merlin about her age and her other friends she was actually 15 years old so she was lying to everybody about 
who she really was. So in 2003, she was arrested and literally only got 10 years in juvenile hall for her participation in the crime. She was 25 years old when she got out. So as of 2021, she's much older now. I don't really know what she's doing with her life right now. I don't really care about what she's doing right now, but I do feel like she should have been charged as an adult because she participated with premeditated murder like she knew exactly what she what she was doing she knew exactly was what was going to happen she knew what type of friends to contact about something like this so i definitely feel like she should still be in prison right now now as of damien gates he received three consecutive life sentences plus 70 years in prison because he actually was the one that fired at merlin because Brandon Bynes, when he tried to shoot at Merlin, his handgun didn't go off because it was jammed. But um, Brandon Bynes, he did get charged with a 23-year sentence for assault with a deadly weapon and voluntary manslaughter. And honestly, this is one of the saddest cases I've done. I'm not even going to lie to you. And the most upsetting because this whole thing was so uncalled for. And I don't really feel like... The Santana family received justice the way they should have. I mean, Monique really should be behind bars right now. Like, I don't care at the fact that she was 15. You were 15 when you knew to lay down with this man. You were 15 when you knew to set something up like this. Like, there's just some kids and teenagers that are not right. So I really feel like she should have been put away for a while. But um, I do know that the Santana family, I'm pretty sure they're still hurting. They're still grieving about this. Monique, she's getting to live the rest of her life, something that Merlin will never have the opportunity to do. And I feel for his mother because she tried to get Merlin away from that type of life. She did everything she can for her son since he was three and he lived such a beautiful life. He did so much in his life that, you know, a lot of us never would get the chance to do. Like he was on the Bill Cosby show, um, acting with Steve Harvey, acting with Moesha, acting with Tia and Tamara. Like he did so much with his life and he wasn't done. He was only 26 years old. And, you know, for his life to be taken like that so young, it's just very, very upsetting. He was so handsome and talented. He was gone way too soon. But yeah, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end with a prayer for the Santana family. And let's go ahead and do that. Father, Lord God, I pray for the Santana family. I pray for the mother, the father, the friends, the family, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you just provide healing, you know, and never-ending love Lord God, in peace, because I know it can still hurt to lose a loved one, Father, Lord God. So I pray for protection for the family. I pray for um, just peace every day, because I know there's some days when they're probably just mourning and they're hurting, Lord God. And I also pray for Brandon Adams, Lord. He was right there, right there next to Merlin when everything happened. So I pray for him. I pray, Father, Lord God, for peace for his mind when he's laying down at night, when he's waking up, Lord God. I pray for a covering over him, a covering of protection over him, Father, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you walk his steps in the right direction, Lord God, that you will always be with him, Lord God. And I also pray for my followers, every viewer, Father, Lord God. I pray that you protect them, Lord. I pray that you, you know, you give them a spirit of discernment, Lord God, so that they never slip away, they never slip aside, that they're always on their toes, being aware of the people that they interact with, being aware of the people that, you know, they decide to be with, Lord God. So I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you're going to do for my followers, for the Santana family and for this platform lord god because this work isn't done you have more to share you have more to do lord god within the black community and i thank you lord god and i thank you i just thank you lord and we thank you father lord god in jesus name i pray amen thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys in the next video